Hello from Senator Wash North Campground outside of Yuma, Arizona. Hope you're having a great day. It is a bright and sunny one here on the lake. And if you haven't been here yet, we highly recommend it. There's about a five mile dirt road to get back here, but the waterfront sites are worth the drive. Before we get started on today's video, we would be remiss not to plug our website, www.hisandhershub.com. Tons of resources for travelers, including our flagship course on creating location independence, as well as ebooks. You can watch videos, interact with us more, all sorts of fantastic resources. Be sure to check it out. It's time for some precursors. We're using the word spouse. Yeah, it's 2020. That word is rather fluid and being used loosely. It could be a partner or pretty much anybody that you can cohabitate with in a tiny space and have the potential of reasoning with. The title, it also says how not to kill your spouse. This is not what the video is about. We're trying to avoid you from killing your spouse. Do not do that, seek help. If you haven't seen us before, you might wonder what makes us qualified to talk about this. Well, for the last eight years, we've owned first a 32-foot Class A motorhome and now a 21-foot expedition vehicle with a 13-foot box, which is our living space. So we've had some experience. As we get started with this list, the reality is it boils down to the little things. So both parties have to change and give. Starting with number one, live outside the box. So for us, that means enjoying beautiful campsites, spending time by the campfire. There's usually nothing that a little bit of fresh air can't fix. Number two, be open to experimentation. There are usually several ways of doing things. So give them a shot for a period of time. If it works, use it. If it doesn't work, move on and keep trying. Number three, accept that there are things you're not going to be able to change, like the dimensions of the box, or the fact that no matter who's using it, things are going to break. The reality is you don't have control over everything, so focus on the things that you can change and manipulate and just let go of the others. Number four, don't be afraid to ask if you need something. It is quite wasted energy to just be standing there just ask, hey, honey, can I please get my phone cord? Number five, divide and conquer. The basic principles behind this are don't step on each other's toes. And two, the reality is only so many people can be on the floor doing work at once. So if you have things to do like cook, one cooks, one does the dishes, or one works on the inside, one works on the outside. The idea is that everybody can be part of the work, but maybe just at a different time in a different way. Number six is a little different perspective on number five, but when you only have five feet of floor space, take turns on the floor because it's going to be inevitable. You're going to need something from over there and then your spouse or partner is going to be in your way and then you're going to need something from over here, but you're always going to be bumping into each other. So make sure you take turns on the floor. Number seven, if things get tense, walk it off because a little bit of exercise and fresh air usually does everybody a whole lot of good. It's also the perfect opportunity to reflect on what petty, stupid, idiotic thing you were actually mad about because it's amazing how that happens in tiny spaces. Number eight, learn to say I'm sorry really, really well. You are not always right you can be wrong and a simple I'm sorry goes a long way, even if you were right. Number nine, learn to share. Let's face it, in something this small, less really is more. And you don't need two of everything. So find a shampoo that works for her hair or a body soap that isn't too foofy for him. The list goes on. There's all kinds of things that you can find to mutually agree on, but don't worry you can keep your own toothbrush. Number 10 works whether you're in a tiny space or not, but learn to compromise. Everyone has their needs. You have your needs, they have theirs. There is mutual ground and understanding involved to seek balance. Number 11, learn to work together. And I think it goes without saying, this is good no matter where you live, but a perfect example for us is leveling out the truck. 
You can work against each other and scream at each other, or you can work together and talk it out, figure it out, and get settled. Okay, I got this. What number are we on? I already told you number 12. Ah, uh, yes. Number 12. Learn how to communicate and listen. Almost every problem can be solved with a little communication and active listening. It will take you a long way in life. Number 13. Respect and accept everybody's quirks. The reality is we all have them. For me, I hate it when Ben steps on my shoes. For him, he hates it when I have more than one pair of shoes out on the floor. We don't really understand each other's quirks, and we can choose to either mock them and make it harder for the other person, or we can respect them, accept them, and maybe give a little bit on our own funny little quirks. Number 14 is imperative. Learn to pick up after yourself. Just spend a little bit of extra time, 15 seconds, one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it takes not to leave clutter because it's a shared space and that is a shared problem. Number 15, take time out of the rig. That might be together, like a vacation, or you can do it apart. Like last week, I flew to visit my best friend from college, Jill, and Ben's buddies from high school flew in and met him for a camping trip on Lake Mead. Well, that's a wrap for learning how to coexist with your spouse, life partner, or anybody who you have the potential of being able to reason with when you're living in a 13-foot box. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, and we will see you on the road.